Will Hector Neres is a Chicago Cub. Josh Hader got here. It's crazy. I would say it's bananas, folks. And Dominican Gate, the uh, the I guess the age gate that has rocked the Major League Baseball world. Three players have been disqualified that they've signed because they weren't of age. We'll talk a little bit about this, but there's a lot to cover in this edition. Locked on Astros. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talkstros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on X, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on X, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen. Whether it's on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to us. Go ahead and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go ahead and check, check us out and become an everyday or subscribe to the podcast. And uh, thank you once again for making us your first listen in 2024. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet's of five dollars or more wins visit fanduel slash locked on to get started today so brett we got a lot to kind of talk about and we even have something that we're going to push to next show with jp france and hunter brown on their workloads from 2023 and how it's going to go into 2024 so make sure you tune in to tomorrow's episode but uh we wanted to talk a little bit about hector naris he is now going to chicago did he right. get that uh, four-year deal or three-year deal he wanted for $50 million that he was looking for? Uh, he bet on himself, and uh, is it going to pay off? Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about – this is just our opinion, and uh, we don't know exactly what led to the Astros getting Josh Hader, but it just it – just, if you put it uh, two and two together, it makes four, and that's just our opinion. And also, what's going on with this Dominican age gate? And so we'll just talk about this and cease this trade talk to Seattle, please. They don't need any more pitchers over there, uh, please. And uh, I just don't see it happening. So we can discuss these on today's Locked on Astros. Yeah, definitely. You know, Hector Neres um, goes to the Cubs on a deal that my initial reaction was, wait, he only went for that? Like, we could have signed him? What was the thinking um, but I really do believe though, that the, I guess, I guess the linchpin for lack of a better term in this deal were the, I guess, incentives in the, in the, in the club right. option, um, because of the, like, I guess 9 million, he turned down the eight and a half, um, from the Astros, their, their, their offer. And I, I really thought he was going to get a three-year deal. Um, he is, he is an aging pitcher. And so that probably played into the factor, but, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the incentives can go as as high as 23 to 25 million over the next two years. 23.25 million. Yes. 23.25 million basically this year and next year combined, right. correct? With the incentives. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's really not like when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, they're paying them a lot. I was like, no, they're not paying them anything. And then my other thought was, why didn't the Astros get him back? Why couldn't they sign him on this? And it, does that mean that they're really looking heavy at a left-handed bat, Eric? Does that mean that they are really thinking, trying to be forward thinking, looking at these extensions they have? Because, I mean, really, even though Hater's deal is the biggest of any closer that we've seen, it's really not, it's, it's not insurmountable compared to the 33 to 40 something million that position players are making. It's really basically half of that. So, um, Hector Neri is going to be a cub, you know, um, there's a lot of former Astros in Chicago, whether they're on the South side or whether they're in Wrigley field now. Right. So if you look at what's going on with, uh, Neris, uh, it's 9 million for the first year. And if he pitches 60 innings in 2024, it will invest the option for 2025. So he'll make another 9 million. 
Of course, you have the other incentives that will lead to $23.25 million. So uh, he's making less than what um, Jordan Hicks basically got, but still – it's uh, it's still a good deal. He is an um, older player. He is his velocity is going down, and I think what the Astros saw is yes, he had a great regular season, but you saw you saw his age, a diminished velocity, and uh, he didn't he doesn't really have a lot of recent closing experience, and so uh, you would think that a lot of teams would be out there. Oh, look what he did last year with the Astros. Look at how he did, but. I think a lot of teams saw what he, what happened in the playoffs, saw how hittable he was in the playoffs, and uh, they're like, "Well, this guy is wanting sixteen point six million dollars. Uh, he's wanting a four year deal with for about fifty million dollars. Is this guy worth it?" And so a lot of people were just looking at the back of his baseball card, so to speak, and then looking at how much he's wanting. He's like, "He's not a closer." He doesn't deserve this. And so that's why they're probably including the Astros. They're probably not even uh, looking at that. They're like, and uh, this is going to lead us to our next topic in a second. But uh, definitely, if you're looking at um, Robertson, he also signed with the Rangers right. for $11.5 million guaranteed. Uh, so he gets $5 million salary in 2024 uh, with a $7 million mutual option for 2025. There's also $1 million per year in deferred money money from 2027 to 2031. So the Rangers go out and answer the Josh Hader deal with David Robertson. But uh, Robertson's 39, right? Yeah. And Hader's 29? Right. I like our deal better. <laughs> I like yeah. our better. I don't. I don't necessarily know that the that that the Rangers retooled the back end of their bullpen. They definitely added another arm right. to him, the Leclerc. But you know, the jury's still out on whether whether or not they will go out and get Monty. But you know, get Jordan Montgomery back, who was a big part of that run. Um, remember they, you know, they still have Bruce Bochy. Will their offense be firing on all cylinders like it was last year? But you know. The Rangers for me getting Robinson doesn't really Robertson doesn't really move the needle for me, but Hater, you know, Hater does. Hater, Hater moves the needle. Um, Hater to me to the Astros moves the needle more than more than Cease to Seattle, more than even Montgomery, just because now you've got a seven, eight, nine. That's a for sure lockdown, pretty much night in and night out. The question is who's going to fill in those longer relief roles, and I think the Astros do have in-house options that aren't bad options if they don't go out and get any more arms. Yes, and uh, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, if you're looking about the um, long relievers, you have possibility for a six-man rotation needed for the first maybe 20 games. Then from there, you may have an extra starter that you can um, maybe put in the bullpen for a little bit. And by the way, I saw a video of Christian Javier, and he looked like he's a much different version this year. He took this off season, got ripped, and he's he looks like he's a lot more athletic. He realized that he kind of maybe didn't do what he's supposed to do last year and saw that his numbers went down. So I think we're going to see a much better Christian Javier this year. And so if we see um, maybe Justin Verlander more comfortable and then Framer Valdez get back to who he is, and then some of these young guys mature a little bit more and Christian Javier return back to who he is. This Astros rotation could be a lot better than we think we are. So in a second, we're definitely going to uh, talk about the series of events that kind of led up to Josh Hader. I mean, we don't know for sure what was his thinking behind uh, Dana Brown and Jim Crane, but it just it's just oddly suspicious it all happened at this uh and it all goes back to some stuff that happened last year so we'll talk about this we'll talk about uh dylan cease going to seattle maybe and we'll talk about the uh what age gate that's going on in uh the dominican so near you near <laughs> new year new you well maybe you stumbled just like i did into this ad read but factor meals is here to help you Factors ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, the cooking fatigue instead of the chef crafted. Instead, get chef crafted, um, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You don't have to go out to eat anymore. It's not even healthy for you. So eat at home. Forget frantic lunch preps and rushed 
dinners, factors, two-minute meals are your secret weapon of the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals all delivered right to your door. When you, when things get hectic, factor is flexible. Change your order every week if you want to. Plans from four to 18 meals per week or pause or reschedule deliveries at any time. Stress less over meal times in the new year. Factors no prep, no mess meals, free up time. Otherwise, spent shopping, cooking, and cleaning up. No more wasting time in the kitchen. That's right. Factor has everything I need for a week and a flavorful option, nutritious options, and they have ready-to-eat meals. On top of that, they have cold-pressed juices. They have smoothies. They have energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep you energized. So what you need to do is go to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 and use the promo code locked on MLB 50 to get your discount today. Factor meals. If you want to factor in success and health, do it right now with locked on MLB 50 right now. Hey guys, thank you for making locked on Astros podcast. Your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, check out the locked on Astros podcast, but check out locked on sports today. It's a 24 seven streaming channel. First ever out there. That's just, it's not just baseball. It's not just basketball. It's not just football. It's not, it's everything out there that has to do with locked on. So just go check it out. It's locked on sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports uh, streaming 24 seven streaming channel out there. So Brett, uh, we definitely need to uh, kind of talk about uh, what's going on once you unmute yourself, but um, I do want to bring up the, this is just our opinion real quick, but I do want to just kind of, this is our opinion. This is just what I think, and this is pro- probably what you think. So last year, the Astros traded for Kendall Graveman, Kendall Graveman missed uh, the playoffs. And I don't, we don't know if Kendall Graveman didn't have that shoulder injury that led to the possibility of, I mean, that, um, well, what if he was in there? Would his arm have been the difference in Astros maybe going to the World Series instead of Rangers? And then that poor Rangers fan wouldn't have that ugly tattoo of the Creed. Um, you, I'm sure you've seen that with the. Yes. Oh my God that that was that was worse than the Astros cheating scandal. That was that's more scandalous than. Yeah. I mean that was bad. I mean I'm sure y'all was, have seen it on TikTok and everywhere. Bad. It's actually yeah. There's there's not much that I've seen that's worse. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, I can understand wanting to celebrate your team winning the first World Series in franchise oh, history, but one hundred percent with Creed. <laughs> but no, not just Creed. Fire the tattoo artist. I mean, is that like a post career Creed? Is that is that like a post career? What's his name? That David Stapp? Is that was that his name? Maybe the lead singer. Yeah, yeah. It, dude, that looked that looked like someone's aunt trying to do Creed at karaoke. So sorry, bud. That was a big fail. Anyway, so uh the Astros got Graveman last year. They did trade away uh who was it? Um uh, the catcher of the future. I can't think of his name off the top Corey of my head. Lee. Lee. I'm like catcher of the future. future catcher, but the I couldn't future. remember, but yeah, I'm Corey. trying to formulate my thoughts here. So um now uh come to the offseason, we find out uh, a couple of Tuesdays ago that Graveman's going to be out for the whole 2024. And now you have a big hole in the bullpen and the Astros are like, well, let's go ahead and bring back Hector Neris. And I'm sure Jim Crane and Dana Brown had that discussion. Well, how much are you willing to pay to Neris? And they probably called his agent and uh, Neris agent said, well, if you want us back, we're not going to give you a hometown discount. We want, we want to play, but we want you to pay at the same time. So they probably asked for about maybe 16 million, 15 million, uh, 14 million, because he declined that 8.5 million. So he wanted to get a little bit more. Right. And so I think that Jim Crane just was like, you know what? This is the market. This is what's going on. So forget Her- Hector Nares. I had This is the market. Why don't we go to the top of the market? And that's what he actually said. Let's go ahead and go out there. And get the best reliever out there. And just if we're going to have to spend money anyway, let's go get the best one out there, which is Josh Hader. So basically, Graveman and uh, Neris gave us uh, Hader. 
Right. I, you know, um, because Dana Brown said that the timeline was like a 72 hour window tells me that I do believe the reports that last year Crane wanted to go after Snell and Hader. OK, right. I'm glad. Oh, that's this, other thing, yeah. yeah, I'm glad at this point we didn't get them because it would have changed whether we kept Hader on a long term deal. Who knows? Maybe they sign them to an extension, yada, 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 whatever happens. But. I think, too, that all this stuff did play a part, that they've wanted um, Hater this whole time. But now, like you said, with Kendall going down, with Hector Neris not signing, what are you going to do to beef up that bullpen? And if you're going to beef it up, why not beef it up in the strongest way possible? And not only that, the back end, and then you can push your dominance that's in the back end down further during the game. So the fact that, Presley's probably taking a setup role to me is not a demotion because Presley's effectiveness and importance as a setup guy and haters effectiveness as a closer is just as right. important instead of having to depend on Presley. And there may be times where you have matchups in a game where they decide to flip flop those. And I wouldn't mind that either. So I think it's a great move on our part. I think the chips have fallen in the right place. And, you know, Kendall Graveman, this is kind of an experiment the Astros have had tried twice, and it really hasn't worked either time. Yeah, he's pitched well with the other teams. It just seems like when he comes here, he's just a dude. He's just a dude that abides. He's, he's not the big Lebowski. Guy. Yeah, he's, he's a jag. He's just a guy. I mean, it's just Kendall yeah. Graveman, I want you to be so much more. Um, right. I want to make sure to say grave circumstances or something like that, you know, um, the grave main is coming, but it's just not going to happen this year. Yeah. So I think now that haters here, a lot of people across baseball, including Rangers fans, they're like, I think Josh H hater signing with the Astros is a good thing for baseball because that means that the Astros can't afford to bring back Bregman from Rivaldez, Tucker, maybe even Altuve breaking news. These guys were probably not coming back anyway. But because the Astros went over this luxury tax threshold, maybe this is a change in thinking for Jim Crane. Just maybe he, he'll be like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go all in and let's let's go and extend uh, Altuve. Let's go ahead and uh, try to extend uh, Bregman. I really don't think Bregman's going to get extended. <laughs> yeah. But I think that there's this chance that Tuck, I still feel like there's a chance I that Tucker might. I still think realistically, and I know there's people out there that doubt me when I say this, but like you said, I, I agree with that sentiment. To me, Tucker is still the guy that you pay. Altuve right. is the guy you have to pay. I remember Sully talking to us on Locked on MLB about Carlos Correa. Like he was the guy that needed to stay in an Astros uniform, mm -hmm. but more so than Correa, Altuve is that guy. Right. And if Altuve is that guy, look, Tucker, why can't we why can't we pay a position player one massive contract? Well, why can't we? He's at the perfect age, Eric. And you don't have to sign him until he's 40 after that. I mean, he spends a good amount of his career and then he's on the downside of his career. And you know what? You know where I could see Kyle Tucker going after he signs an extension with the Astros? I bet where? you, I bet you he goes to Tampa Bay. I bet you he finishes up his career in Tampa Bay if he's not a lifelong Astro. He signs an extension here, bookmark it, and he finishes in Tampa Bay. That's where he's from. If that team doesn't and, move to Tennessee. If they don't. Oh, God, why would you? <laughs> oh, man, it's in my mouth. Good God. Why do you want to ruin that? Oh, yeah. But here's the thing. What about this? What if Tucker and McCullers both end up in Tampa? They're both from Tampa. Right. I mean, I mean, I can see it. I, I'm just saying. I think we get Tucker for the meat, for the for the height of his career, where Yanner Diaz is going off, Jordan Alvarez is going off, all these players, Bregman's gone, Desenzo comes up, lights the world on fire, Lo Profito comes up, lights the world on fire, Arigetti and all these other guys. But yeah, um, Kyle Tucker, sign him. Him and Altuve, let's make it happen. All right, so uh, we're talking about a lot of ages right now. And so I think, I know in Dominican Republic, age is a big thing. There's this movie where there's this uh, 30 year old guy that hands a umpire, a uh, little paper and it says I'm 12 and it has a $10 bill in it. And uh, that's how he can play in a little league game. Right. This is not what's going on in Dominican, but it's basically what's going on. You have 
people that are older than it, they are uh, saying that they're younger just to get uh, more money. And right. uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, definitely. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And while I don't really have any numbers to give you right this second, I can tell you that the big game is right around the corner. Happy big game. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate it. It's America's number one sports book. And if you're like me, this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, when it comes up, is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some money on the game with some super cool bets. All right. So here's the deal. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. That's right. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today, get $200 in bonus bets. That's right. They up the ante, folks. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, that's $200 in bonus bets. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports partner of the NFL. Hey, guys, check out Locked On Sports today. It's the first ever uh, streaming 24-7 channel out there. It's got all the sports news you need to know, all the NFL playoffs going on right now. Who's going to go to the Super Bowl? Who's going to win the World Series this year? I know baseball's uh, paramount on your mind right now if you're watching this podcast. But go and check out Locked On Sports today, and it's got all the everything you need to know 24-7. All right. So, Brett, I know that 15, 20 years ago, there was a big problem in Dominican. And uh, I guess I would say across baseball with people saying uh, lying about their age. I know Miguel Tejada, uh, he got in trouble for um, saying that he was he was actually older than he actually was. Uh, So uh, there's a lot of uh, things that reasons for this, Uh, like we've talked about on podcasts before. If you're above a certain age, you're no longer um, considered a prospect in the in the uh, Latin countries in the in the right. um, international world. So uh, you have people saying that they're younger than they are, and so uh, Major League Baseball has uh, done some back background checks. They have done put in some checkpoints for this, and a lot of teams have gone above and beyond to really they've actually hired people to actually investigate uh, these people before they actually sign them because a lot of these deals are handshake deals. Hey, how old are you? Let me see some type of document. Okay. That looks good. We'll we'll go and sign you. So, um, but um, apparently there's about 50 players that have uh, had their arrangements with their teams nullified because they lied about their age. And according to multiple, uh, executives from different teams the astros were the hardest hit because they've lost three players we don't know who those three players are but uh, that's a big hit so you know it's funny this this issue has flipped from someone saying that they're older than they are to people saying that they're younger than they are so that that is an interesting plot twist in this whole um thing and look the the whole saga of players coming from other countries you know I don't know if many people know this out there, but kids from the Dominican, um, a lot of times by the age of 11 and 12, they drop out of school and they go to these baseball academies. And they basically, it's kind of like there's there's this place called IMG Academy um, in Florida. And it's like a super, super sports school. Okay. Like if, if your kid's like the best of the best, he goes to IMG Academy, they get the best training. They have dorms. It's basically like a college for high schoolers, right? And these kids, they have on their mind, I need to make it to professional baseball. Why? Because I got to get out of poverty. I got to get my family out of the hole that we're in. And this is their best opportunity. And what what I don't like about this, and I think, I think, I think Major League Baseball is somewhat complicit in this because if I'm a major league club and I'm willing to sign a kid 16 or 17 to a $1.5 million deal, but I'm only willing to give a 19-year-old fifty thousand dollars what message am i sending what do you expect kids and men and young men 
that come from challenging situations who are looking for a better life. And we don't knock them for that at all. But what would you or I do in that situation? A lot of times, if you can get away with it, you probably would do that if you were in that circumstance. Now, it doesn't make it right. But I think the system at hand needs to be revamped from baseball's perspective because that sends a very poor message. Oh, you're 19. Oh, you only get 50 K. Oh, you're 16. Here's 1.5 million kid. What are you going to do? Right. I I think it's based on their talent level too. Yeah. But I'm just saying though, you're not offering a 19 year old, what you're going to offer a 16 year old. Cause 16 year olds got a lot, a lot more time. Like you said, prospect wise, I, and I don't know all there is to know about this topic, but on the surface, reading the articles, seeing the initial reports, it seems like it's not just the issue of the kids lying on their for or the guy saying they're, saying they're younger than they are. They're incentivized to do that by the system at hand. The system right. enables them and basically because if a 16 year old and 19 year old got paid the same, do you think they'd be lying about their age? Yes or no? Um, yes. No, Maybe. no, you wouldn't. No. no, think about it. If if I'm going to make 1.5 million or 2 million as a 16 year old signee, or 50 thousand as a 19 year old, or if I'm going to make 1.5 million either at 19 or 16, oh okay, yeah, I hear what you're you saying. Saying, yeah. you're you're not going to lie about ability, uh, uh, like driven versus like like what your floor, what your ceiling, or what your like right. talent just, level is versus age. And you know, honestly, look, I mean the elephant in the room is there's a lot of things that have been uncovered with major league baseball over the years about these various kids and, and the ages and stuff. So um, I think though they need to get this right. And if, if we disqualified those three players from the Astros, you know what, then they need to be disqualified for that reason. Yes. All right. So let's cease this talk and talk a little bit about Dylan cease. I know that um, a lot of Astros fans that watch this podcast, they have really pushed us for about two, three years now to go get Dylan Cease. And a lot of people are like, why is he still on this team? Here's a quote from John Heyman. The White Sox are asking for the sun and the moon in trade talks for Dylan Cease. This is why. This is why I've been saying for two to three years. Dylan Cease is an ace. Yes, he had a bad year. I forgot if it was last year or the year before, but this guy has the stuff. He has the the potential for 200 innings, 200 strikeouts, three-something ERA. And then today we have Bob Nightingale come out and say that the Mariners have engaged in trade talks with the White Sox surrounding Dylan Cease, and that there's a trade package that's centered around Bryce Miller or Brian Wu. Uh, so those are uh, both great starters in the app, in the uh, Mariners uh, rotation, but um, it's going to take a lot more than just that. They're going to have to give up some of their, um, the Mariners have a good farm system. That's why they're able to compete with the Astros. That's why we've seen them. That's why we've seen them rise uh, to where they are right now. And, uh, but I just don't know if they have enough to get it done. Yeah, no, I mean, at the end of the day, if 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 Seattle gets him and someone someone had a uh, not a Twitter beat, but they had a counterpoint to my tweet about if if Seattle gets cease, then I think it makes them one of the contenders for the AOS just because yeah. I just kind of believe in what they're doing in Seattle. Um, they were like, well, you know, pitching is not their issue. It's it's their offense. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. But Dylan cease to Seattle would be would be a big thing to have him and Castillo in that lineup along with Logan Gilbert. I mean, that would just be a, one of the, one of the better rotations, right? So at the end of the day, bottom line is this Chicago is going to price themselves out of a trade and they're going to keep doing this. If they keep doing this, Dylan Cease is going to walk as a free agent and they're going to get nothing for him. So the question is, does Chicago really want to get something for him or do they want to wait until his years are up and they get nothing for him? That's because angel. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just saying, I mean, get him now. I mean, because what happens if Cease has another bad, what if, what if he has a bad year and then you want to trade him? He's got maybe like one year left, you know, like what are they going to do? Well, just remember that he, somebody like him, he still has trade value. When the Astros traded for Justin Verlander from the Tigers, he was having a bad season, 
but the Astros knew that they could fix him. They knew that uh, he was just on a bad team. And so playing for a team like the White Sox, sorry, White Sox fans, if you're listening to this, uh, they're just not, they're not a team that's built to win right now. They should have been with all the prospects that they had, all the, um, the big names, but uh, maybe in a couple of years with the right trade, but right now they're looking to still build from within. Speaking of prospects real quick, um, the Tigers did something that you don't really see a lot um, that often they actually signed a player that hasn't really played that much in, in, in the minor league, in the major leagues at all. Colt Keith, uh, they've signed him to a six year contract extension through the 2029 season. Uh, so he's basically before, I believe this is before he's uh, played in the big leagues, $82 million over nine years. Good luck with that. We've seen how those deals have ended up working out for some teams. So, you know, Eric, um, this is a great show. And coming up on our next show, we're going to talk about J.P. France and Hunter Brown and their usage in the 2024 season. So make sure you like this episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and tune in to our next episode. J.P. France and Hunter Brown. What would the workloads be? Well, I think what my workload is and Eric's workload. We are ready for this season. We're getting ready. We're in spring training mode already. We're actually mid-season form, all right? Y'all can check it out. Um, thank you for tuning in to Locked on Astros. We're your team every single day. Tell them, Eric. Go Strohs. We'll see you tomorrow.